Hey, Pool Chasers, before we jump into the episode, we wanted to tell you about Pool Pro Magazine's 30 Under 40 feature. They want to highlight people under the age of 40 that are bright, driven, and who are making a difference in this industry. So if you know somebody like that, please go to poolpromag.com and click the tab 30 Under 40, or click the link below in the bio to nominate them. Now, let's talk about this episode. If you're listening to this, you may have already heard of IPSA in some way, shape, or form. You may already think you know what they do or what they're all about, and you may think it's a bunch of older guys in a room making decisions, but that's entirely not true. We had some of those same thoughts and had formed our viewpoint without actually attending a meeting or doing the research ourselves. Well, my whole perspective changed for the better when I attended a meeting a few weeks back, and in this episode, you will hear why. So whatever your viewpoint was before this episode, we ask that you have an open mind and hope you understand what they're really all about after listening. Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Viafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. All right. Well, thank you guys both for being here in the studio today. We appreciate you guys coming all the way up here. I appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Excited to be here. Thank you. Our pleasure. Can you guys tell us a little bit more about yourselves, you know, how you got into the industry, what your company does, and kind of what your involvement in IPSA is? Uh, Mark, we'll kind of start with you if that's okay. Yeah, I grew up in Phoenix. Uh, I'm all but uh, a native. Been here since 1964. I've always had pools in my life as a kid up until now. I've uh, been married for about 36 years. I have uh, We have one daughter and three beautiful grandchildren. I started the business, at my business, in about 1994, and I got into it in an, as an opportunity to start my own business, but build it slowly the way I'd like to do it so I could also stay at home and uh, raise my daughter, help raise my daughter. And it's worked out beautifully for me. And uh, two years after that, in about 96, I joined uh, IPSA, which stands for the Independent Pool and Spa Service Association. It's just been amazing for me. I have done so many different things. I've gotten involved voluntarily. I've been chapter officer on all levels. I've worked my way into regional director. And at some point in time, uh, I'm not sure what they were thinking, but it was they voted me president of the association at one time, which was some one of the most amazing uh, things that I've ever done. That's what I do. I'm also involved in town here in Arizona. I'm on the advisory council for the Drowning Prevention Coalition of Arizona, which I, I have a, a big heart for. So uh, volunteer work is something I really very much enjoy. Uh, IPSA has been a wonderful catalyst for that for me. Yeah, I thought you had a really cool story that we were just talking about on how you even got your start into the pool business where you knew uh, you had a buddy that actually had a pool business and you said, hey, you know, you mind if I, I'll help you out and work with you? You know, I just want to learn. You don't have to pay me or anything. Yeah. Share with us a little bit about that. I like what like I had mentioned earlier, I wanted to start my own business. And so, of course, you know, being in the pool industry is so easy. But uh, <laughs> but uh, I had a friend who was servicing pools at that time, and I approached him and I said, if you'll take me around and teach me as much as you can about the pool business, I'll work for you for free. For uh, six months to a year, uh, when I had time, it wasn't an everyday thing, but it was quite a bit, uh, I'd go out with him and he taught me the basics of the pool business. You know, I I don't think I'd mentioned to you earlier when we were discussing, one of the funniest things is when he kind of set me off on my own and I said, okay, now I'm going to start my business. My uh, first two customers were uh, two neighbors in my neighborhood on my street, as a matter of fact. And I think my total revenue for each month was about $50. I think I was charging them. 25 bucks a piece to go oh, over wow. and take care of their pools. Wow. <laughs> so, that is a true story. <laughs> well, I'm glad he didn't have you uh, on skim and brush duty for, <laughs> for two years. <laughs> so, is am I ever going to move past that? Am I ever going to move past this? <laughs> Isn't it always how it is? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to do the chemicals. You do the skim and brushing. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> you know, 36 years later, you're still working for free. Yeah, well, pretty Skin much. and brushing. <laughs> That's funny. When did you, so was he an IPSA member? No. No, he wasn't. I've got all sorts of funny stories. I don't mean to <laughs> take over, but no, that's what we're doing here. Yeah. People say what we've had numerous discussions, Steve and I, and a number of people. What made you join IPSA? And, well, I went on the website, or I did this, or I learned this, and this, and this, and this. Now, with me, I was driving down the street, and this is so. This is so true. I was driving down the street, and I saw a bumper sticker on the back of somebody's truck. And it said, you know, IPSA was an IPSA bumper sticker, Independent Pool and Spa Service Association. And there was a phone number, I think. And I called 
that's how I joined IPSA. And I said, oh my oh, goodness. Cool. I could be with a bunch of guys like me. And that's yeah. at the end of the day, that's the true story of how I joined IPSA. And that was, would have been about 95, 96 when, when I joined. <laughs> wow, that's, that's pretty crazy. cool. <laughs> <laughs> Bumper sticker advertisements. <laughs> it's cool. All right. Thanks for sharing all that. Appreciate that. How about you, Steve? Yeah, I grew up in uh, Minnesota. I've been here since 97 and I've tried really hard to lose my Minnesota accent, but it just keeps popping up. Uh, we didn't have any swimming pools growing up. We had lakes. I watch everybody here in Phoenix while we take care of swimming pools, uh, complain about their green water. And I'm like, man, you've seen nothing. We used to swim in the Mississippi River. It was brown as coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, growing up around lakes and rivers, swamps, mud holes, whatever, uh, coming down to Phoenix, our, our lakes were the pools. And growing up in the land of 10,000 lakes, we're in the land of how many hundreds of thousands of pools. And so it's kind of cool. It's it's just a different kind of water. Having been a person who nearly drowned as a child, I've kind of feared water, which it's ironic that I work in my career around water. But I've always told people I'm okay with that because I can pretty much stand up in almost every single pool. If you don't mind, well, what happened? Uh, sitting on the end of a dock and took a football to the back of the head and it knocked me down into the water and I took on water. And so it was kind of, I, I don't know just how close to drowning it was, but it was enough to scare the pants off me. I was probably about kindergarten, first grade area. Oh, and wow. so that was quite a experience, but I, I've always been a mean dog paddler. I never really did get into a real good uh, solid swimmer. Definitely not any competition for Michael Phelps or anybody like that. I, you're like in survival mode. You know how to... Exactly. As long as I can see shore, I can probably get there. If I can't see shore, I'm just going to take a big old gulp and call it quits because I'm not going to get there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's... I, I'm married, uh, my wife, Heather, and uh, we've got four kids. We've got a uh, daughter from uh, Heather's first marriage. She's uh, Maddie. She's often married on her own. She lives in Gilbert. And then Heather and I have four, uh, three boys together. Uh, they're 12, 10, and 9. They're a handful. She's a stay-at-home mom. And three boys plus myself is a lot of testosterone in that house. And <laughs> so she's pretty much ready for a break when I get home. But uh, it's great. What do three boys do for fun? Well, I always kind of watched other parents uh, getting into the technology part of this world. And I said, man, I'll never let my kids sit there and play video game after video game. But my kids play a lot of video games. <laughs> <laughs> and, Until they uh, went to school. And that's what everyone else is doing. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of had to accept that. And I thought, you know, the military put a commercial on TV a few years back that actually highlighted that. They highlighted a kid playing video games and then they kind of transitioned it off into the war field. And I thought... Well, maybe I am okay with this. Maybe they can do something good with it. But uh, they do a lot of other stuff too. I my my oldest is is one that really enjoys going out shooting with me. I I enjoy going out shooting when I can. Uh, the middle one loves cars, and I love cars. So he's always asking, "Can we go to a car show?" Or you know, he might even want to try to save a couple bucks. Say, "Hey, hey, Coop, you want to go for some ice cream?" And be like, "Nah, let's take the money and put in our cash account for the next car." I'm oh like, man, dude, you just kind of. Hit Dang. the heart there, man. You, so you got you got like a buddy for every, uh, <laughs> yeah. each one of those. And then the youngest one, Lincoln, he's, you know, he's kind of that I'll go just about anywhere thing. He's, he, he'll do the car thing, but he hasn't quite gotten into the gun thing yet. He's, uh, as the youngest, he's still kind of got his eyes open. I was the youngest of four kids myself. And I, I, I appreciate him because I kind of sat back in the distance and I watched my brothers and thought, you know, he didn't get away with that. So I'm going to learn from that. And just going to be a floater. Yeah, it wasn't the, I wasn't the spoiled little baby of the family. I was kind of like, I watched them get in trouble for stuff, and I kind of learned how to get away from not getting in trouble so much. But came here in 97, got into auto sales. So like I said, I like cars, and it just really wasn't doing it. I, I, I didn't like really ripping people off. I, I think a lot of car guys get that stigma, and I think a lot of car guys actually do that. That's well earned. Yeah. And so <laughs> I was looking for an opportunity to get out of it. Uh, another guy, a friend of mine, was working for a paddock pools retail store, and he was just doing it for kind of something to do. And I thought, you know, I'm going to ask him if they're hiring. This car gig is just not doing it. And he says, yeah. He said, why don't you go down and talk to a guy's name was Dwayne. And I went in there and I took a job for, I think, $7.25 an hour to get out of the car sales business. 
And I sat there testing people's water at a pool counter in Tempe. People would come in and they'd be complaining about their pool guy. And I'm just like, man, there's a lot of complaints about the pool guy. There's got to be a business here if you just go out and be better than that guy. He bought an existing route, hired me to work with him. Uh, We did that for about two years together. And then I decided to go off on my own and I started my own pool service. Uh, I was a one polar for a number of years. I uh, worked for a Lowe's home improvement store while I built my pool route. So I'd work on pools during the day and work on stock and shelves at night. And then I went off and decided to trust that I was going to be okay and ran pools exclusively. And then I hired my first guy and grew some more and hired another guy and grew a little bit more. And uh, a couple of years ago, we decided to also get into the uh, pool reverse osmosis process. So we bought one of the trailers from Water Industries out of San Diego area. We run that as well. So we're that's trying awesome. to keep going with two businesses, so to speak. And uh, that's been good. It keeps us busy. Um, How do you like the RO business? I love it. It's probably the greatest thing I really enjoy is I, I do like people. I'm a people person, love to talk, and it generates a lot of conversation. You get the people walking the dog on the sidewalk and they'll stop and they'll ask, what's this? Where's all the water? Where are you going to take it? I'm taking it anywhere. I'm putting it back in the pool. (laughs) We're saving it. And so it's fun because it generates more questions and more opportunities to talk. I've had people pull me over on the side of the parking lots off the freeway and ask me questions about it. So it's different. It's fun. And I don't have to compete with Amazon. Mm -hmm. And so the internet sale thing is kind of not something I have to fight with on that. So it's a good business thing. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how much attention it brings to somebody's house because I had my pool ROed yeah. uh, less than six months ago. And it was just like, like, what the heck is going on over there? This big old rig in front of the <laughs> yeah. house. You know what I mean? Right. You just definitely tell because most, you know, RO trailers or whatever have crazy artwork and designs yep. on it. So it's definitely a good marketing piece, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Going back a couple of years, I, I remember uh, being at one of the SCP branches and seeing this IPSA thing. And I thought, I'm going to ask the counter what IPSA is all about. So I asked for their uh, input on what the advertising on the wall was. And he says, well, it's just a meeting. You should go check it out. And that was really as cut and dry as it was. So I think it was about 2007 or so. Went over and attended one of the meetings and decided, you know, this is something I want to be a part of. So I, I joined it, became a part of it, like I said, back in about 2007. And five years ago, I uh, started my serving the organization by being the vice president of the East Valley chapter. Did that for two years, as most vice president succession goes into the presidency. And so I ran a two-year term as the president. And uh, about six months ago, I stood up in front of them at the end of my term and I said, well, I, I have always told everybody, I think we should be willing to serve our association. We're a volunteer organization and we need volunteers. So I, I sat here before you four years ago and two years ago and said the same thing, and I'm going to say it again. If you want me to run your chapter, I'll run your chapter again. I, I'm willing. Uh, I think they had more confidence in me than I'd had in myself, but they asked me to run another term. So I'm in the middle of my second term um, leading the East Valley chapter. And so... Congrats. That's awesome. Appreciate it's just, it. Uh, that's the biggest chapter in Arizona, right? Uh, biggest in the region, actually. Arizona and Nevada is Region 8 for the IPSA Association, and uh, East Valley is the biggest one. Uh, we've just recently split off, uh, started a, uh, I believe they're going to call it the Southeast Valley Chapter. Southeast Valley Chapter. Uh, they're going to run that out of the Santan Valley area. Uh, one of the superior branches down there is going to host them. Superior Pool Corp, they're all really good about hosting us and, and letting us use their facilities, which is outstanding. They're a great association and great asset to the pool businesses and uh, associations as well. But that will take a couple people from our chapter, but we're big enough that it's not going to hurt us. We can kind of help support them, help them grow. And hopefully things down in the Southeast Valley of the Phoenix area will flourish with their chapter. So when you went to the first IPSA meeting, what was it about it that you really, you actually wanted to join? Like, what was it about it that just got your attention I remember sitting there listening to a couple of vendors uh, just get up there and want to be a part of other pool guys and gals, listening to a little 
training tidbits. Uh, somebody might ask a question and say, how do I get rid of this problem or how do I you know, install this? And there was a willingness of guys in the room, competitors trying to help one another. Well, that's real simple. You just do it this way. And I thought that's pretty cool. These guys are here trying to help one another. The vendors are here trying to get relationships. And I was feeling kind of, I guess, by myself because I was by myself. I didn't know that many people here. I came down from Minnesota. I didn't really know a lot of other pool guys. I was working for a, another retail outfit rather than just being dedicated only to the industry. I didn't get to know that many people. I was on the rush. I go in for parts. I didn't care who was in there. I just get out of my way. I got to get out of here. And that was a venue that I could go to and meet people that were doing what I was doing. But there was also a willingness to help me get better. Yeah. And I thought that was really interesting. And, you know, they had the, you had to go to three meetings at that time before they'd even really entertain your membership. And I thought, oh man, I got to go to another meeting. All right. Well, I'll see you in a month. Three meetings later, I decided this, I'm going to join this. This is this is good stuff. And, and there's like a lot of current events too. It probably makes you more knowledgeable about, you know, what's actually going on in your area opposed to you doing your own research right. day in, day out. Or we all know that you'll probably burn out of that at some point. But if there's meetings happening, there's actual, you know, topics that might get brought up that are affecting... Um, things going on in our area. That's a good point. That's That goes back to when I first asked at the distribution counter, what is this IPSA thing? The guy that answered that question to me says, well, you know, when there's things going on in the industry that we may have to try to vote on or talk to legislation or have an influence, it's guys like those in the IPSA organization that are trying to go and lobby to help promote the benefits of not knocking something down in the pool industry. You know, don't take away the ability to put water in your pool. This is a multi-billion dollar industry. We need to keep it strong. And they're going out and fighting and rallying for that. And I thought, you know, that's a great cause. I want to be a part of that. Very cool. Thank you so much. Jobber is constantly updating and adding new features to their software. That's one of the main things we like about them. As technology changes, so do our customers. We're happy that Jobber is always on top of it. And now for your update on what's new with Jobber. Ladies and gentlemen, and I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. So one of Jobber's newest features is called Appointment Link Added to Text Messages. This feature allows you to let the customers know when you're on your way or running behind all through the app. Jobber has presets like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, etc. Choose one and send it. The customer gets a clean text message from the professional, and you just saved yourself some time. Wow, that sounds pretty awesome. So how do we set that up? You will need to create a request for the customer and then assign it to a member on your team. Once the request is open, you will see a message icon. Click it. You will see at the top it says status, and you can choose on my way or late. Then there are minutes to choose from, 10 through 60. Choose one, and you can see the text preview below. Hit send, and you're done. This is incredibly easy. I remember having to copy and paste numbers to call or text or having to call the office to have them contact the customer to let them know we are running late or we are there early. Now this can all be done in just a couple quick steps. That's right. So if you're not yet using Jobber, you can sign up and get 20% off your first six months by clicking the link in the write-up below or going to getjobber.com forward slash pool chasers. Two weeks ago, I actually got to go you know, attend your guys' chapter meeting, which I've always heard about, we've always talked about, but never had the opportunity to really go, you know, and sit through one. So I really enjoyed being there and seeing, you know, what it means to all of you and seeing, you know, it was very eye-opening for me to see that you guys really care for one another. And it was more of, you know, I've always kind of heard it as being, for lack of a better word, older, cranky people sitting in a room making decisions. And, <laughs> and you know, and that's kind of, I think some some people's view in the industry as well, but you know, it really changed my perspective on it. And that's why we've asked you guys to be here because I think a lot of people have either heard that or I think that way in, in some way about IPSA. But, you know, we've always thought it was something bigger, just never had the chance to go do it. But you being the president, you're a younger guy. You know, Jason is your vice president. Jason right. Becker, he's really young. He's been in the industry a few years and he's, he's I got to spend probably 45 minutes talking to him. Mm -hmm. Having these different type of people in it, you know, has changed my perspective. And 
wanted to kind of dive into what IPSA is exactly so that we can kind of explain it maybe to people if you've ever heard of IPSA, you've ever had questions about IPSA or, you know, just kind of want to know more about it and what it actually does. So can you explain what IPSA stands for and what it's designed to do for someone in their business and maybe some of the history behind it? Yeah. Uh, IPSA stands for the, again, I, the Independent Pool and Spa Service Association. I can get into great details. It was actually what we are now was a formation of two other there was something called CalIPS in California and IPSA, which was the Independent Pool and Spa Association. Uh, those two, without going into great, great detail, those two ended up merging, creating what we have now, which is the Independent Pool and Spa Service Association. It was basically and is to this day formed on the idea of what we call sick route coverage. Those of us and those of any of your people look at your podcast, if they're in the pool industry and they're running their business and maybe they're just like we used to call or still do call a you know single pole pusher, what do you do? You break your leg. You fall off a water feature on somebody's pool. Who, how do your pools get serviced? Now, maybe you're lucky enough you have a nephew. You might have somebody that can step in, but that's generally not the case. So we were founded on the idea of having your fellow members, the other people in the association working with you. So uh, we just finished, as a matter of fact, in our chapter, a sick route. Uh, some poor guy, I'm not sure how he did it, but crushed his foot, couldn't walk. So he had somewhere close to, I believe, 80 pools, uh, something to that effect. And our chapter covered all of those pools. We serviced his account for no money. Right. We're doing it because that's what we do to help our fellow pool people out, our guys in our in our chapter. Uh, I got to see that too. I thought that was really cool. And him stepping up and thanking you all for helping him. I thought that was genuinely sincere of him. He really felt that you guys helped him out and took care of him. He, you know, he even said, you know, I got chemicals for you guys if you, that have been covering, you know, come out and get the chemicals. So it was cool to see that in act, play out in action because, you know, you just kind of hear about that. But he was genuinely, you know, very grateful that you guys helped his business move along. And I thought that was pretty cool to see. It is. It's it's something that is just so important and just uh, I believe in so much. And the funny thing is you had mentioned that you're right. He had said, I've got uh, tabs or, you know, chemicals out in my truck. After the meeting, please come out and get what you need to replace what you used to put in those pools. I didn't look, but I guarantee nobody went out to his truck. I guarantee nobody. I heard a few people truck. say, no, it's okay, man. I, you know, yeah. I got you or something. That was, that's really cool. It's And that's just a small thing. And it's not about free chemicals, but it's about the camaraderie. Mm -hmm. It's about, yeah, we got you, buddy. We got you covered. It's not going to kill us to throw a few tabs. And that respect is there. It's like the thought that counts, you know, the that you would say, hey, come out here and get some chemicals. That's a right. really cool thing to say, even though, you know, most people are not going to do that. Right. You know, it's right. just the fact like, you know what? I don't have a problem covering that guy's pool. Man, he really appreciates it. I mean, you know, you are a member, but um, just knowing that people really do appreciate that because, you know, it's not easy, you know, covering these pools and just doing it in general um, it's not an easy thing to do, um, but that's a really cool Absolutely. Gesture. And uh, and so, obviously, uh, Steve and I feel extremely s strong about uh, sick route coverage, but there is more uh, that we have. Steve was talking about, and I was talking about earlier, joining, and, and inevitably, if you ever talk to an IPSA member, the first thing that most of them will say was, why did you, why did you join IPSA? Well, the insurance. Well, yeah, we have probably the best insurance in the industry. Uh, right. it, and I'm not just saying that. It is outstanding. We actually, if you're a member, you you get life insurance. Uh, we have what's called accidental medical. If you, I mentioned earlier, if you're walking in somebody's backyard, you're walking on a water feature, you fall, you break your leg, you're covered through this as being a member up to up to five thousand dollars. And we all know, uh, not in, in when you're a sole proprietor, or you you're work. It's hard to get health insurance, so something like that comes in handy tremendously. So. But I think another point on that is even if you have good health insurance, oftentimes that comes with a big deductible. And from what I understand, this is also able to be used towards that deductible. That's correct. So for those that have great insurance or those that have, hopefully everybody's got something. Right. But even if they have minimal insurance or catastrophic coverage only, this is a help as mm -hmm. part of the membership. That's just part of the membership. Um, probably something that, that you can't ignore what we do is education. How do we, we have to educate ourselves. If we're going to be successful in this business, this is a perfect opportunity for that. Uh, 
part of what we're doing. We have been talking today about uh, us here in the East Valley or us here in Region 8 where we put on a show every year, the Desert Pool and Spa Show. We do that not just for IPSA, but we do that for the industry. So we try to put on a trade show for that. And so these are all kind of things. And we have people come in and talk at the chapter level to us about different things. We have vendors that are coming in. And I know sometimes people think, well, I just don't want to get a commercial. Well, it's not usually that way. They kind of come in and talk about, there's a lot of Q&A. We're obviously working with their equipment and working with their product. So if they can come in and give us a little bit more detail and answer some questions, this is a perfect opportunity to do that. Yes, I understand that the world is so much easier than it was when I started 100 years ago, where you know, I had to read trade magazines and all that. Now you can go online and look stuff up, but the opportunity to learn. And Steve also touched on a national level. Uh, we're out there working in the industry as a whole. Uh, we're working, our California chapters work extremely hard and they get legislated, we all know, pretty hardly in California. And uh, so we're working those levels all the time to try to keep things fair uh, for us in the pool industry. Right. So I could go on for two and a half hours, uh, but uh, there's a number of things. It's, it's I don't regret a second of being a member of this and probably finally the camaraderie, the friendships. I have developed friendships that I have had over the years uh, that you just can't replace. Uh, funny story about our chapter, we had uh, a member of another chapter in our valley show up at one of our chapter meetings one time and he just showed up and it was just prior to the meeting and you may have even seen a little bit of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Guys are coming in and, oh, hey, buddy. And they're, everybody's hugging each other, asking how the kids are, how the grandkids are, how the wife is. Everybody's just getting along and shaking hands. And, and he looked at us and he says, what is going on in here? I said, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? He goes, what is this, the love chapter? I said, well, <laughs> yeah, we get along pretty well. <laughs> you know, you know, so, uh, and that's... I love that. I, I love the camaraderie. I guess some of my best friends uh, I've learned, I've met through IPSA and uh, well, you know, a couple in particular, and they don't even live in Arizona. They live in California. So it's, uh, that's really cool. It's, it's wonderful. So you mentioned that this is mostly for people that, you know, are just kind of have their route and they don't have, you know, big company like we had, because we were asking, you know, we had about 400 pools, would this be something good for us? And you guys had said it'd be good for, you know, more the networking piece and a, and a few other things, which we think is, you know, just as valuable. But can you, you know, talk to us about how this would be, um, why being an Ips IPSA member would be good for, you know, just the one person and, uh, you know, what do we, I don't want to say Johnny One Truck, because I know that is that is in my head, but that's not what it is. Well, Johnny One Truck is what we call the ones that don't do it right. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's definitely not that one polar. I guess. Yeah, one polar. Be. So how you know this would benefit the one polar? Well, I, I've been in both situations myself as a a single operator. The benefits, as I touched on before, you you get to have those relationships with vendors that you may not have otherwise. Uh, let's face it. In a small business, you need all the support you can get. In a big business, you need all the support you can get. When you got your vendor relationships and you're seeing them pretty regularly on a monthly basis, you have a problem out in the field, it's a little easier to call and say, hey, this is Steve. Steve who? Well, you know, Steve Ward. They're like, uh, okay, and they'll kind of work their way through it. As you are at this meeting with them every month, you start to get to know these people. You, you, your relationships are building. They know who you are. You, you start doing more of their product. They start helping you learn more. You might get them on job sites and say, will you teach me how to program a complex automation system or maybe even help me install it? It's not that you can't get that outside of a or association like IPSA. You, you may be able to get that on your own. It's just you may develop a deeper relationship. You may develop a faster relationship and get that help a little easier. Then having employees, I've always taken the standpoint with my employees. I, I know a lot of guys, even in our chapter, think I'm crazy to let my employees in on some of the inside workings of my business. 
they don't want their employees knowing any more than they need to for whatever privacy things that they may have. And that's fine. It's their choice. It's their business. We're all usually AAA personality guys that own our own business. And I invited my employees to come since day one. My point of view on my employees coming is they're also establishing those relationships. Thinking of myself, if I go down and get hurt, I've got my coverage from my fellow IPSA members. But what happens if something worse, my death happens? These guys are actually protecting their employment. One, one is a family guy. One's a single guy. They're, they're protecting their future by getting involved. And now most vendors know my employees just as well as they know me. Some may even know them better. I, I, I have my employees as full members, so they also get the sick route benefits, the life insurance benefits, where there are also employee members available that don't get as many benefits, but we chose to put ours in as a regular member so that they could get those benefits. And so I think those are some important key things that work for my business um, as, as far as accelerating the relationships, I, I don't think there's a better place than a association of the industry or things like we talked about a little bit earlier about the Desert Pool and Spa Show. Even the other shows, you know, a trade show is a great place to get those relationships and to really, you know, foster them into a real big help for your business. Yeah, I think it's impossible to do everything by yourself, even educating yourself, all those different things. And if you have you know, uh, address book that has all the different contacts. Of, they're pretty much friends. You know, if you've built up these relationships and right. you've had these good conversations enough to where you can get their email, phone number, all that good stuff. When situations come up and you need to reach out to uh, somebody, you know, that's a professional in that area and then can help you out, like it, it's a, it's crazy how important that is. We've built a, a list of all the different things that each guy in our chapter might excel at. I'm not the guy who's going to fix all the parts of a heater. I can fix some of them, but usually if it's something that might burn my eyebrows off, I'm probably backing off. <laughs> but I might know the guy across the table is really good at that. And because I've had that relationship for years, I trust that guy. I'll ask him, hey, can you come work on this? I'll pay you to do it. I'm not asking for a handout, but I trust you. I know you. And they'll come out and they'll fix that for me. And I've done the same thing. I'll go out and I'll fix something or install. I, I've done a handrail for you, Mark. I, yep. you, you, I, I do stuff like that that maybe he doesn't. And, and so that networking among the people that you know already kind of helps facilitate taking care of your customers even Absolutely. a little bit stronger. Absolutely. Takes, yeah. takes care of your customers. One of the lines that we uh, we use in IPSA is, uh, and yeah, we love these little cliche type lines, but the <laughs> one that, that we have that I really believe in is uh, you're on your own but you're not alone. Right. And we use that quite a bit uh, as an association. Kind of kitschy, but it uh, but it works and it makes a lot of sense. I think, you know, when you're talking about the your relationship with the vendors, like we all kind of know even as human beings like you're you're more likely to help somebody out that you know than than right. not. I mean, we get approached a lot by people that, you know, for help and it's like, yeah, we'll help you, but you know, but when you get approached from your friends, it's kind of like, okay, you you'll go a little bit a little Absolutely. bit farther for those people, right? A little bit, you'll work a little bit harder maybe. And I think it works the same way with the vendors, you know, and that's not a knock against them. But like when you build relationships, you know people are going to use your product, but you also know you want them to use it correctly and not have, you know, um, warranty claims, not have issues. Like you can, ex as a vendor, you can explain to them how to do it properly. Then you won't have any issues with that person. Right. But as the, you know, technician, you can then you having that person's personal cell phone number and being able to call them right away and them actually wanting to help you is a pretty cool, you know, as opposed to somebody else out there that just calls the, you know, help lines and takes 45 minutes and does all this. That's hard to get. It's hard to get people's phone numbers, you know, that especially vendors, they don't right. want to just help anybody. You know, they want to help the people that want to be helped and the people that they build relationships with. So I think that's a really cool point as far as the vendors go, you know, building those relationships, even for your guys to be able to call vendors out in the field, helps them not have to call you, then call the vendor, then call, you know, the hotline, you know, helps that, you know, you get your problem solved much quicker right. and you can move on, yep. you know, in 115 degree heat, not sitting on the phone for 45 minutes with you know, corporate or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. We want to take a second to get to know our sponsors, MPT, a little bit better. We're very excited to talk to MPT product manager, Summer Wynn. So, Summer, 
Can you tell us why the listeners should take their clients into a design center? You definitely need to come into an MPT design center because you have uh, an expert who can lead you through the process of selecting what you need, not just for your tile, but for your pool finish and your coping or your deck. But that's the fun part of it all, is looking at everything that's available. The dedicated personnel we have there is gonna help guide you through it and create that masterpiece that you want for your pool. Pool tile is an aesthetic product, so you want to touch and feel. You actually really should take them outside in the sun to see how it, the reflection is in different angles. The samples you see, you can actually take them home with you. You need to be able to see how it will look in its true environment. So coming into a design center allows you to be able to do that. Thank you, Summer. If you want to find out more, click the link below in the write-up or go to mptpool.com. And don't forget to follow MPT Pool Products on Instagram and Facebook for the latest photos and product information. So what exactly are the requirements to become a member? Every chapter is a little different, but in general, uh, Steve had uh, talked about it a little earlier. It used to be uh, where you could, you had to have three consecutive meetings, and we have meetings on a monthly basis. And uh, once you did that, uh, then we also have a water chemistry test. Uh, and you have to pass that. Now, you can take it, I think, 10 times now, and you can do that online and be voted in by the chapter. I'll be honest, in the umpteen years I've been doing this, I don't think I've ever seen somebody not voted in if they've met these requirements. Uh, obviously, then there's a, a certain amount of money. And actually, I'll defer to you to that, one, Steve, because I haven't done it in a long time. But uh, Well, I, I guess going back to one of the points that you're mentioning uh, back when I joined, yeah, we had to go to three meetings. We had to have all these other different things. And through the years, we've kind of, there was one guy that actually, I believe it was in my presidency early on, that came to the chapter and wanted to join and he was denied. And I thought, what just happened? And so we kind of went back to the table on it and we said, okay, so if this guy doesn't have any ingredient, I don't care which one it is, how do we get over this hurdle? And so we, in that point, I think he was a little too new. He'd come out of a different corporate job, and we used to want a year of experience as uh, the, the pool industry needs to be your main source of income for a year or more. And we went back at that and said, let's figure a way that we can fix this problem because not everybody's been there a year. And so we developed a mentorship, and we'll take somebody, a veteran like myself, Mark, anybody who's been in the industry for a long enough time who is willing to say to your fellow brother or sister and say, here's my phone number. I will mentor you in any way that I can. I am available for you. We got over that hurdle of that one year experience because why let the guy learn things wrong for a year and then say, oh, by the way, let's see how good you are now. We wanted to help the guy or gal because it's open to guys and gals. And yeah. we wanted to help them get better while they're still trying to establish their business. And what's the likelihood he comes back when you denied him? That was a hard, <laughs> hard sell. Probably We got not. him back, but, but it I was mean, tough. You know, in general, like as is, is thinking as is far as that thought process, if you're denying somebody from your organization, what's the likelihood, unless you reach out and bring him back, you know, what's the likelihood that person never comes back? He probably has a bad taste in his mouth yeah, forever. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And that, that's one of those things that we just, it, it was a bad taste in my mouth. Hmm. And having to look at somebody who wants to be a part of my association, not mine, but my chapter, our chapter, the one that I'm leading, and I got to tell this guy no. It left a bad taste in my mouth. And so going back to him and saying, you know, here's my number. Even if you aren't going to be a part of IPSA, I, I'm willing to help. I'll help anybody. I, hmm. I believe in teaching a man to fish. Right. So, yeah. so is is that the same for every state? So let's think if somebody in a whole other state is listening to this. How do you? Where do you even go to figure out if there's a chapter in your in your area? So to find the chapter, you're going to go on just the ipsa.com, and I think you can search by zip codes to yep. find a chapter. You'll, you'll even find other pool guys that are a part of the association. You can find pool service companies by a zip code as well. But each uh, part of your question may have been, you know, what does it take to be a member in each of these chapters throughout the country? 
each chapter could have their own standing rules and have their own qualifications that they're going to require of that prospective person. The, the story that I just told about somebody not having enough experience was part of our own standing rules. Right. And we changed those because we just, we wanted it to be a little more open. Okay. The so, but, so once you actually find, you know, you put in the zip code and it's like these pop up or whatever, do you get to click that? And that's where you actually get to take that chemistry quiz and it gets submitted. Is that where all of that is done? All that information will come up there. Uh, there's usually information where the meeting is, uh, what time it is, what it's always like ours is the third Thursday of every month. And it's always at six o'clock. Uh, every chapter is going to be a little different wherever it is right. in the country. Uh, so that information is going to be there. So either a, they can just show up at that time or the, usually it's the phone number of the president or the email address of that president. Uh, and you can contact him him or her and get the information that you need and go from there. The only thing that I can think on the top of my head that is nationwide would be the water chemistry test. Uh, every chapter may be a little different. They're all going to be generally pretty close to being the same. Uh, we have a number of different ways that you can get in uh, fast track, uh, what we call fast track, which is if you've got a CPO certification, if your chapter chose so chooses to do so, you don't have to go through three months, three consecutive months. If the chapter says, if you've got these certain certifications, it doesn't have to just be CPO. There's a number of different certifications out there. If you have that and that chapter says, we'll do it, fine. Then you pay your monies and it takes your chances and you're off and running. Uh, but that's going to be on the chapter. But the only thing I can think of, and now what we've done is you've got a year to take your water chemistry test and you take that online. And it's actually even open book. You know, right. the idea isn't trying to preclude somebody from joining is let's learn. You learn as much as you possibly can. And it's, it's somewhat of a, it's a 50 question test. It's somewhat difficult, but, uh, uh, you get 10 or 12 times to give it a shot and, and pass. So, and those tests are in the, uh, they use the IPSA basic training manual that oftentimes is referred to in various conversations, uh, that's the book that's going to provide all the answers for that prospect who is trying to join. Those are awesome books, actually. We're uh, fortunate enough to get some of those from Greg Garrett, and those are those are really good books. How long does it usually take um, to become a member? Like if you do the quiz, you're doing everything, like how long does that take? You can start going to the meetings oh, uh, right away, right? You don't even have to be a member and you can come to the meetings. We, we want everybody to come. But uh, to answer your question, if you, let's just say for the sake of argument, you've got certifications. If that chapter is accepting that, you're going to be a member probably within two or three days. You'll fill out the paperwork, you write the check to the treasurer, they send it off. Uh, when you do that, we actually act, maybe a better way to explain it is, with our insurance, and we have a preferred provider, but you can get insurance anywhere you want. But uh, with our preferred provider, we're pretty much acting as the underwriters. So if somebody has joined and we have voted them in on the chapter level, then our insurance is going to accept that. They're saying if we've gone through our due diligence and we think this person should be a member of our chapter, then you're fine. You don't have to go through and work through the insurance company to see if they're going to accept you. If we say it's okay, you're in. And so that's, if you meet that criteria, it takes two or three days. Oh, wow. It's, it's pretty quick, but you know, there, obviously there's certain criteria that has to be met. So our own personal chapter, we meet as a board a week before we have our chapter meetings. And so the president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer, We'll actually invite uh, my email and my phone number are in the IPSA website for our chapter, and I'll, I'll get a phone call. Typically, it's every once in a while an email, but usually it's a phone call. Somebody will come on and, and ask a lot of questions, and they'll say, well, I'm interested in joining. What do I do? I will then invite them to the meeting, our, our chapter board meeting, so our board can then meet that person, ask them questions, interview them, so to speak, uh, rather informal, just get to know them, uh, kind of vet them like Mark was saying, is this person getting their income from the pool industry uh, primarily? It doesn't mean that they can't get income somewhere else, but it's their primary source of income. Have they got any credentials that uh, may be part of the fast track? But again, in our chapter, uh, 
we try to, if there's a hurdle to get over, that mentorship will help a lot of it. But then once we've actually had a chance as the board to uh, get to know them, the next chapter meeting, we will then actually present that person to the chapter, uh, introduce them, talk a little bit about them, let that person talk to the other members and sort of be question and answer time, a little bit of an interview, and then we will vote on them then and there. Uh, that will then allow them to become a member relatively quickly. But the one thing that I think a lot of people need to understand is the insurance side of it. We can't just put them on the policy that day. It's usually going to be the first of the month. But the good thing about our meeting being the third Thursday of the month, if we get our paperwork in line quickly, we may have them insured shortly thereafter uh, being voted in. So, What can people expect from a meeting? How does that flow? What's going to be talked about? How long does it usually run? Well, that's how long does it usually run can vary greatly. Uh, we try to get in and out. Our goal is about an hour and a half. It may be a little bit quicker if there's not a lot of things to talk about. Uh, if we get a lot of vendor participation, uh, it may go two hours. In general, uh, yeah, uh, uh, closer to an hour and a half, I would yeah, say. That's our uh, goal. The, what what we generally do is uh, it's, we'll have a networking time beforehand. So the meeting may start at 6. So we'll tell everybody, you know, show up at 545. And uh, what we do in our chapter is uh, for a vendor, we're lucky enough that we get a lot of vendors that want to come and talk to our chapter. Well, if we let every vendor talk, we'd be there until midnight. <laughs> and so we tend to limit them. If if you're the lead vendor or you're the, and the, the uh, executive board works on that ahead of time, you're the vendor for the evening. You're going to be it. You got to bring us food. And that's, and everybody's oh, been doing this for so many years that they just understand, <laughs> hey, you, you want 15 minutes, we'll give you 15 minutes, but you got to bring us food. After that, everybody gets two minutes. And it's not that we want to control the vendors that much, but if they got time to talk, they're going to be talking yeah. as well they should. I would do the same thing. So we control it like that. And then we'll have a our formal business, um, you know, new business, old business. We'll go through reports and things like that. So we, it's a legitimate meeting that, that we have to run. I think another key point to expand on when you talk about the vendors, we also have associate membership for vendors. So it's not just about the pool guy or the pool gal being a member there's also associate membership from vendors who they will actually uh, – there's several different tiers. There's, I think, starting at Titanium. 750 bucks, I think, a well, year. But there are there are levels of membership that are thousands of dollars uh, where they are – that manufacturer is supporting IPSA financially very strong. That's one of those things that can expand that length of that meeting a little quickly because if I get 20 vendors show up at our chapter meeting because it's a big chapter – I got to give them their time. They've they've supported us. I can't turn around and not accept them to speak for a little bit. So that may eat up a little bit of time right there. I try not to talk too much. Uh, I try to have as little of updates as possible, but it's the vendors that support us that we try to actually give some floor time to. So what are some of the like exact topics that you guys are talking about? I mean, is it kind of uh, very structured? where vendors are talking and then you talk about, you know, actual IPSA and then, you know, maybe, you know, some things going on in the Phoenix metro area, things like that. Like what are exactly, what what can people expect in terms of like those exact topics? It's not going to be as dry as, uh, you know, we have to have a business meeting. We're having a chapter meeting and there's, you know, certain criteria that needs to be followed when it comes to that. And, you know, saying that, I don't want to, I wouldn't want to scare anybody off and go, you know, I don't want to sit through that and Robert's rules of order and all that. But it is a meeting and it does need to happen and it needs to be professional. And uh, in general, it's a lot of it, we vote on certain things. Do we vote on things every meeting? No. We give reports on uh, what we have in the coffers at, for our chapter. How much money do we have? We have uh, we have to vote on the minutes from the previous meeting. These are all just routine things that need to be done. In general, we spend a lot of time talking. We are a nonprofit uh, organization, and we as a chapter and as a region and as national spend a lot of time and effort and money uh, 
for example, with drowning prevention, with a number of different things. There's children's hospitals I know that they're working in, working with in other parts of the country. Uh, so those are the kind of things that, that you'll have discussions about. Uh, the business part of it doesn't last as long as uh, the vendors do, or we will have a topic from time to time. Hey, at this point in the meeting, it's March. You know what's happening here in Arizona. It's going to get hot. Maybe we need, let's take 10 minutes and let's talk about, run some ideas through everybody on algae control. Yeah. At the top of my head. We do that quite a bit too. And then, you know, everybody loves, everybody's got different ideas on how to do something with that. So this person does this. Uh, well, I do this and I do this. Well, this is where you get some of those great ideas. And you may not agree with them, but then you can have a nice conversation about it all. And so we spend a lot of time uh, working with that. How can we help each other out? Right. So it kind of changes a little bit with time right. and depending on the area. But I know when we had our pool service business, those are the things that we wanted to know. We want to know that, you know, this law hasn't been passed yet, but we're working really hard to to make this happen. And these are some things to expect. Hey, we need you guys to sign this to get on board with what we're talking about. Um, here's an update. There was this many drownings this week or last week. And we all need to be doing our part and teaching our team to close gates. If there's no gate, we need to talk to the homeowner. Like, need to know like what is going on so that we are being the you know the the best professional we can possibly be when we're in those backyards. So I know those are the things that we always talked about. Was like go to these meetings. Like that's the kind of stuff that we really want to hear. You know what I mean? Because especially when it came to the variable speed pumps, gosh, it, it was always like oh well, you know it. Some people would say, no, it's illegal. You cannot install a single speed pump. And then there'd be other people like, well, not technically. It's not just yet. This law hasn't passed just yet. There was so many. It's like, dude, what the hell is it? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, can I, can't I? Which one is it? Like, I don't Like, and that's what we're always trying to figure out. Like, what is the answer? There's right. only one question. There should be only one answer to that. Right. We know what the right thing to do is, but is it illegal? Like... Am I going to go to prison? <laughs> right. Like, Is there a pool police? <laughs> pool police yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, pool police. Love to see that. Am I going to get that, a ticket on my pump? <laughs> and that's a good point. Back when the variable speed was coming into the Phoenix market, we at times had, was it Ecova, I believe was the company uh, that was helping yeah, out with mm-hmm. SRP and yeah, APS. Uh, they would come and speak at times and try to help clear up the mud. Um the manufacturers do their parts to try to to share. You know, this is what we're getting. Um, that's that's a lot of the benefits that we see uh, from having the manufacturers there. There's other benefits with those manufacturers that uh, have come on board through the years. There, there's benefits as a member that we get. Uh, one of the distribution companies will give us. I think it's like a two percent rebate as a member for all of our purchases. Another one of the vendors, I'm sorry, uh, distribution companies is giving, uh, they'll give out checks quarterly. Uh, they've teamed up with other manufacturers and said, hey, would you be a part of this? Would you be a part of this? How much will you give us? We'll get a check. Uh, I get checks every quarter from it. Uh, one of the manufacturers has come back and said, hey, if y'all kind of pair up and team up, All of your whole goods purchases will come and at the end of the year, we'll tally it up and we'll give you some product. We got as a chapter last year, Pentair smashed it out of the park. Pentair had a program for IPSA. All the whole goods for every so many you buy, we'll give you points. And as the chapter president, I'm facilitating the program and I get an email, I think it's in December, that we usually get our rewards email from, from Penter as a, main, as, a, as a service guy or as IPSA. We got 36 variable speed pumps from Pentair just to support oh, wow. our chapter. So what we chose to do with that is some of it we're actually giving, our chapter gives a variable speed pump to one member every single month. We do a drawing at the end of our meeting and somebody gets to win a pump. We... As soon as we received those pumps back in, I think it was about March, we probably, right. I think it got them in February, stored them for a couple of weeks. And at the March meeting, we held a little bit of a silent auction, kind of going back to what we do with our funds as an organization. We take that money 
and we put it back into the community one way or the other, whether it's drowning prevention efforts. Uh, one of the things that another benefit of IPSA is they have a, a education fund as far as on a national level. That's sometimes a little harder to get the funding understood. How do I get reimbursed for this? And so we're looking at some of the new stuff that we're trying to bring in on our chapter level because we are relatively strong financially because of people like Pentair. Hayward's trying to put something together that'll be similar. And we're looking at that thinking, we're a nonprofit. What are we going to do with this thousands of dollars? And so we're trying to put together a chapter level for East Valley IPSA education reimbursement thing so that we as a chapter level can say, you want to go learn something that'll make you better for your business? Let's help you. Greg Garrett's class is a great point of view right there. Greg, being a part of this show, has some amazing classes available that he teaches. So what if one of our members wants to go and take a class that he offers and maybe know how to do great startups? And we have those funds. We can help cover those expenses as a member benefit. Yeah, that's really no, cool. That's really good. That's really cool that you guys do that. And you're thinking real forward thinking, you know. I think a lot of people would do that. I got to see a lot of that actually happen. You know, I got to see you guys vote in a member, which was probably unique for me being there one time. Yeah. You know, I got to see that whole process of it's like you being know baptized. Yeah. You know, <laughs> 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 like him stand you know, but I thought it was a cool thing. You know, you stood up and talked to the whole team, asked everybody if they had any reason. Well, you sent him out of the room that time. You know, you, you talked to that, let him talk, and he got to kind of explain who he was, what he does. Then you sent him out of the room, and you guys had your own conversation of, you know, does anybody oppose him being here? But I thought it was cool you gave every opportunity to, to talk about him if they had something, if they knew something he was doing that was shady or for some reason he didn't, you didn't think you should be involved in the chapter. Then, you know, you could talk about it there, but obviously right. you guys didn't with that guy, and you voted him in, brought him back in, made him a member. I thought that was a cool process. You know, I, I don't, I saw, I thought you guys reported on on deaths, which was interesting, you know, and, and the number of drownings that had happened so far this year. I thought that was a very you know, different approach, but very good to under, for, you know, people in the industry to understand. And, you know, there's different things I got to see that never really had seen before. So, you know, thanks for letting me come by and check it out. But I really thought it was definitely an eye opener on like, <laughs> you know, what you guys do, especially since I had my own thoughts about IPSA, you know, right. by hearing it about from right. other people, which we always talk about, you know, you should make your, form your own opinion, whether or not you have a mentor, you know, just don't, don't do everything your mentor tells you to do, make your own opinions on, right. on your own things. Cause this industry is pretty, you know, gullible to that. I think, you know, Oh, my, my mentor told me this and that's the way it sh should be done. But, you know, form your own opinions. We always kind of talk about that. Yeah. Well, I've always used IPSA, uh, you know, to my benefit, too. Uh, I go into a backyard, somebody calls me, and I'm going to go see them for the first time, and possibly they want to hire me to service their pool. They don't know me. They don't know anything about me. And I don't, even if I had the world's best website, they still don't know anything about me. They, they don't know. So one of the best things I have found is I'll go in the backyard and, the, and I'll introduce myself and, uh, you know, come please show me your pool. Let's see what you got. And I said, let me tell you something about myself. Let me tell you who, I don't say it quite this bluntly, but why you should hire me. I said, first of all, I've been in the business X number of years. I'm also a member of IPSA. Let me explain what IPSA is and why that's important, why I'm in your backyard. And I explained to them about insurance. I explained to them about continuing education. I explained to them about, you know, the one line I always use with everybody is, yeah, I'll just tell you right now, I don't know everything, but I sure as heck have access to somebody who does. If I can't fix an issue with your pool, I guarantee you I can probably find somebody who can. And I said, you're not going to get that with just everybody. And right. uh, so that's a really cool thing to say because, you know, showing the potential new client that you're responsible and you r run a responsible company that, hey, if something happens to me, because in the real world, I could very well break my foot or something like that, just know that this pool will get taken mm -hmm. care of might not be me, but you'll get an email saying that somebody else might be covering it, but I have insurance and the route actually is backed as well. So another, uh, you know, IPSA member that is more than qualified will be out here helping out with that. So exactly. I think, you know, that is something a homeowner 
probably won't ask you, but I think, you know, the likelihood of you getting that pool, you know, just went up, you know, that much more because they're like, you know what, that's what I need. I need somebody that is educated, is responsible. And I mean, that's at the end of the day, that's really what they want is somebody they can depend on. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that. I've actually had people, prospective customers call. I haven't seen my pool guy in three weeks. And I've actually transitioned that thought process now after being in IPSA for so long. I said, well, maybe they got hurt. Any chance you got their phone number, I'll call them. I might be able to get them to join IPSA because we could have helped him. <laughs> but, yeah, I hear a phone ringing by the equipment. Oh, my God, I think he's over here by the equipment. <laughs> So I want to take a minute to introduce our newest sponsor and supporter, Ledge Lounger. Oh yeah, really excited and thankful to have you all on board with us. Yeah, we actually recorded an episode with Christopher Anderson, the CEO and founder of Ledge Lounger. It is actually episode 29, so if you have not heard it and to understand more of the story, go check it out. Definitely one of our favorites. So I think the easiest way to describe their product is they make a high quality outdoor furniture that looks amazing, especially by the pool. Their signature product is a Chase, and I can't think of a more iconic piece in our industry than that. Definitely. The Chase sits in the water on Baja or Sun Shelf. You might notice people tanning on these on Instagram, and their feed is just blowing up with thousands of likes and comments. Oh, yeah. I've definitely seen those. So probably rings a bell now. Yeah. So we just actually recently went to Brookshire, Texas to meet up with the Ledge Lounger team, and we took a tour of the facility and really got to understand the company and culture so much more. Everyone was so full of energy and excited to be part of the team, and they all did their jobs flawlessly. And they just came out with a line of games. And these games are made out of the same high quality materials as our outdoor furniture. And, you know, they're designed to go poolside just like the furniture is, which is really cool. And while we were there, we were able to test drive one of their new games, the ping pong table. And let me tell you. (laughs) Yes, please tell us. I don't know if you saw on our Instagram IGTV, but I was passing out whoopings on their ping pong table. Oh. I mean, Tyler and JC, they just, if, if you see the IGTV, you'll you will know they just didn't stand a chance. I mean, I really felt like Forrest Gump in his prime. Oh, my. <laughs> just kidding. Y'all tried. I mean, you, you do get an A for effort. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so anyway, if you want to find out more about Ledge Lounger, go to ledgelounger.com. So we talked about a little bit about sick coverage. Can you explain, so if, let's say I have a pull route and I get hurt. What's the process of that? How does it get covered? What do you guys do as a, as a chapter? How do you figure out, you know, who covers what? Right. So we actually have a sick route coordinator uh, position in our chapter, and that person will uh, usually facilitate that phone call or email. Uh, oftentimes, they'll call the president if they can't get a hold of the sick route person. And we'll get that news that uh, somebody went down, broke a foot or shoulder, or got cut, it's not for the sniffles. It's not for someone. Uh, I had a guy go down last week from the heat, and I'm looking at it thinking, well, if this goes a week, we got coverage. But it has to be a week or more. It's got to be under the doctor's care. Again, it's 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 for really, truly, I can't work. Right. It's not that I'm tired. It's not that I'm overheated, unless you're overheated so bad that you had a heat stroke and you're out of work for a month. As long as you've got a doctor's note that says, hey, Steve's legitimately sick, he really can't work, and I need you to excuse him for this much time, then we can actually enact sick route. And along those lines, and not to interrupt, mm-hmm. it, when we say a doctor's note, we don't know, need to know the details. Right. It's not none of our business. You know, but if we get a note from the doctor saying, Joe is not doing well, he's going to be down, that's all we need if it's right. a legitimate doctor's note. So uh, anybody who's thinking about joining saying, well, if I go down, I don't want them knowing what's wrong with me. We don't need to know. No, your privacy is still at stake. And your privacy you don't need pictures. You're not going to no. get <laughs> <laughs> Although I have those pictures. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I woke up Sunday morning, uh, I don't know what it was, two years or so ago. And uh, Sunday morning, I wake up out of bed and my phone's going nuts. And I'm like, what's this? And I have this gory picture of... A fellow pool guy's leg that's just, it looks like it's just in pieces. Uh, He was working on his truck and it fell on his leg. And for some reason, he thought I needed to see the pictures. And I'm one of those guys that I'll just take your word for it. But uh, that's how I woke up on Sunday morning. What did you text back? Are you okay? I I texted back and I said, I didn't need to see that, but uh, are you okay? Um, it It was comical, but coming from who it came from, it 
really actually kind of fits the personality. Yeah. Um, I called him up. We talked for a little while. He was actually in the hospital. Uh, I could see that angle from the the picture that he was in a hospital bed. Um, but we've got, uh, again, emphasizing your privacy. We, we don't need to know the details. If you want to share them, that's your choice. We don't need to know them. Um, we have sick route cards that when you become a member, we hand you one card that basically says, this is all of my personal information. This is where I'm going to keep all of my pull route information. And so the sick route coordinator holds all of the pool company's information. Where is this person's home? Where, what's his phone number? Where does he keep his cards? And then as a company, I'm supposed to have a current file of all of my route. So then that sick route coordinator knows, hey, Mark went down. Mark's card says, here's where he lives. Oh, good. His cards are at his home. And so I can go over to his house and pick up all the cards and the gate keys and all that stuff. And now I can go and I can notify the rest of our chapter members saying, hey, Mark went down. we got to cover him. And we're going to use our, our chapter because of our location uses a particular SCP location to drop the cards at and we'll notify all of the members. The members then have 24 hours to go and grab those cards and then facilitate that sick route coverage and take care of that guy's pool's for however long we need to. We've done sick route for as little. I think the shortest one I did was two weeks, maybe even one. Yeah, and the longest one I think Long. we did was seven months. Uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe even a little longer. Um, seven months. Yeah. Well, hopefully I passed through Christmas. Did it get through Christmas? <laughs> get your tips? Yeah, a lot of it is we chose to do that because the way our we had discussed earlier uh, what you can do on a chapter level. Sick route is not in perpetuity forever. Uh, it's for a specific amount of time. Now, we as a chapter can vote to extend that. But let's say, for example, you get eight weeks. After eight weeks, we need another doctor's note. Again, we don't need to know the details, but we need to know that yeah. you're still not going still to. Under the care you're of the still doctor. under the care of a physician. Make sure that, you know, you're also not taking advantage of exactly. the and system that's, that's because the there's other people that need to be taken care of. So I got two big things now I'm really thinking about this. And the first one is... What if they don't come back and they like their injury is bad enough to where they just they're not going to make it back? Have you guys ever dealt with a situation like that? Certainly. We've dealt with that and we dealt with death, uh, people passing away. We will work with that uh, specific person. If their injury is so bad that they just can't work again, then we will work with that person under a specific timeline. So we'll give him time to either A, sell the route, B, turn it over to a son, whatever, or wife, nephew, or whatever. wife, or whatever the case may be. If they keep us informed on that, if they say, I'm never going to be able to work again, we just don't go, okay, bye. We'll work with that person. Now, we can only do it for a certain amount of time. Uh, but uh, we've dealt with that with death. Uh, somebody's passed away, so there is a certain amount of time that we can work with the spouse. Uh, it gets really difficult. I don't know how much we can help sell it. I think we got to stay away from that aspect of it, but we can maintain the give route. Give them the time. To give them the time to do what they need right. to do. We can't really get involved. It gets very legal. And, sure, sure, sure. So. I was just curious if that ever happened because obviously if somebody gets injured that bad, there is those possibilities that, you know, something else might have to happen. Absolutely. So the other thing is what if I have a pool route, it's 50 pools or whatever, and I need the time. What if the person that, is actually doing my route is getting me negative rev reviews or different things like that. I'm sure that it's really difficult and it's really, you just never know what's going to happen. But, you know, what do you guys do about something like that? I'm sure these people that are going to be, you know, taking over the route are somewhat mm -hmm. qualified. So the qualifications are going to come into play of kind of that, if we're accepting them as a member we're thinking that they're going to be qualified. If they're a new person, there's a mentorship. I have gotten those calls as the president during a sick rat. Hey, Steve, I'm getting feedback from my customer that uh, nobody's been to this pool, or I'm getting feedback that the pool quality is not there. I don't know if somebody's going. It's real simple. It's picking up the phone, 
calling the person, you know, getting a hold of the sick crowd coordinator saying, hey, I, I, I need the name of the person that's covering this pool. Do you have somebody on that address? Yeah, it's so-and-so. So I'll call that person. What's going on? Are you going to this pool? Well, yeah, I'm going. And we'll, we'll find ways to double check on that, whether I have to go and, and facilitate it myself or just a conversation. But it's really rare. And in all of the time, all of the sick route that I've actually been a part of, I just don't hear it That's awesome. very often. Yeah. Um, there is honor among men, so to speak. Uh, we all hate to take that time out of our own busy schedule and say, oh, man, I got to go cover somebody else's pools now. Nobody likes to do that. But as soon as, like you were saying, Tyler, you got to see one of the members stand up and actually say thanks. Nobody wants to use it, but you're really thankful that it's there. How's a guy going to keep his business for two months during the, well, we're in monsoon season right now. How are you going to keep your business afloat? It, it's going to be hard. So how many pools are you actually, are they divvied up? Are you taking like They're a divided. little bit of, okay. So other people could take another day or something? How does that? Typically it's going to be divided up. Say somebody's got 80 pools, like we we're talking, this one was about that. We'll try to take our membership and divide it out and say, okay, we have, let's say we have, if we had 40 members, everybody's going to get two. We try to limit that so you're not going to do more than two or three right. because we know it does take away from your own business. And that's not what this is about. It's to help your fellow brother or sister out. Right. And so that impact needs to be small enough that it doesn't make it a hardship on your own business. And you can go above and beyond for well, what's two or three pools. It's, oh, we've yeah, had it's like guys. two or three pools a week too. It's not like you're doing two it, or three pools exactly. a day. It's two a or week. three pools two in your whole week. Because yeah. with two or three pools, especially the first month, we know that it takes a while to really get to know a brand new pool. Absolutely. But right. you're making sure that the notes are on point and that you can spend enough time there. And if you got to call the owner, or, you know, call whoever to make sure that, you know, because we knew for our pools, we had the most detailed notes you can possibly have because we didn't want any bad feedback. We wanted to make sure that, you know, what the customer wanted, we were making it transparent with the technician. So when they got there, they knew that, okay, obviously don't leave this gate open. Make sure that this goes here. When you leave for whatever reason, they like it in service mode, they're going to turn it off. You know, it's just the weird things, but if it's in the notes and you just follow it, it can be done, but you know, not every pool and every customer is exactly the right. same. And that's part of that sick route card that notify it, the, the blue card. We have a blue and a yellow. The blue one is about the pool business. There's one of those cards per business per member. The yellow card is the one about the property. And that's where we try to detail that out and say, is there a dog? Does it bite? Does that dog <laughs> bite? Is All there, I need to hear is if there's a dog. <laughs> yeah. But there's also an area on the back of that card for chemistry documentation so that we can have some form of going back to the owner of that account saying, here's what we did in your absence. Mm. So we try That's to keep cool. those records detailed. Nice. Thank you. Well, cool. Thank you. Um, so let's jump into maybe a little bit of insurance talk. I know we touched base on it, but... When you become a member and you make them insured, what does that give them? We have a prefer preferred provider, mm -hmm. and that's Arrow Insurance. And we've had them for ever. And, uh, you know, just my own personal opinion, outstanding insurance. But to be a member of IPSA, you are not forced to take that insurance. If you've got another insurance that you like, if you want to shop your own insurance, you can certainly do that. So I just as long as they're A-rated. As long as they're A-rated. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so what I can speak from is what Aero Insurance has to offer, and uh, I would probably say a majority of our members have that. So uh, and I can't speak for the others because I, sure. I don't know anything about it. What you get, uh, first and foremost, is a uh, million dollars per claim, up to $3 million aggregate. Now, if you've got $3 million in a year in claims, they're probably going to drop you from insurance. But uh, uh, but a million dollars. Anybody, anybody would do that. Though. Yeah, anybody yeah. would do that. I understand. That. Uh, so you get a million dollars right on top. Uh, some of the things that, that you get that are specific to being an IPSA member is, uh, Steve had touched on it earlier, is hazmat. You're going down the road. 
somebody rear ends you and you've got, you know, eight gallons of liquid chlorine and eight gallons of acid. And now you got a cloud going up and, you know, the fire department has no sense of humor. And uh, that can be an expensive cleanup in the city, state, county, whatever is going to uh, charge you for that. Is that the most common thing? Uh, no, actually, it doesn't happen as often as you would think. But but we we offer that to membership up to 5000 Is it 5000 Actually, the I think hazmat? it's more. Yeah, I think it's no, more. I think it's like fifty. I think it's fifty thousand. Yeah, those hazmat are uh, really expensive. expensive. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, I think you're right, Steve. It's I forgotten. I think it's fifty thousand dollars. So, we've got that. We've got lost key insurance. Now, this is all. Yeah, you know, people think is silly, but you know, everybody who's in pool business knows you've got a ring of keys for everybody's backyard to open up gates. Sure. Inevitably, sometimes they get lost. What this will do is go back and rekey all those gates and everything. And uh, that pays, they pay for that. Now, that's just the fun stuff with, you know, to get that. But uh, we also have uh, life insurance. And for every member, it's, I think it went up, I believe it's $55,000 yep. per member. And no, you don't have to be approved by a doctor. You get it just by joining. Yep. Uh, you can purchase more on top of that. So you get 50000 as part of what your dues are if you want more you can work with uh, the insurance company and get more on that. I think one of the most incredible benefits on the insurance is workmanship. Who's going to cover workmanship on an insurance policy? What I mean by that is we're, we're dealing with so many electronics nowadays in this industry, whether it's an automation panel or a variable speed pump, you go wired up wrong. It's workmanship. They'll cover you. They'll actually ensure that whether it's, you know, a documented employee, you know, obviously an undocumented employee, there's going to be an investigation. If they find that he's not on the list, there's yeah, no coverage. Right. But as far as just about any of those things you can think of in workmanship, I can't think of a regular insurance provider that's going to say, sure, we'll cover that. The cool thing about Arrow is he's kind of gone through and thought of all the things that a pool guy or gal might do and say, we'll cover that. But also being in IPSA and having all these manufacturers supporting you guys, it, I'm not saying it's the easiest thing to do, but you could probably get on the horn and maybe get a representative like, hey, we messed this up. Is there any way we can get another, you know, automation set or a new pump or whatever? I don't think that's very common. It would be the easiest, but I would take my chances in being in an IPSA. I've heard that story many times, yeah. actually. Yeah. Or doing it by yourself, like, hey, you know, who is this? Yeah. yeah. yeah so that sucks, man. You should probably learn to do that better. <laughs> better luck next time. <laughs> Inevitably, now, the way, like you were saying, you, all, you were all saying, the relationships you, guilt, you build now, now you make that call. Okay, Steve, what'd you do now? You know, it's, I've uh, heard that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always done in good fun, and, but to have that kind of relationship. It is. really does come down to that relationship, like you say. It's... It is absolutely incredible how many times I've heard those stories from other members. Uh, I know a lot of the vendors very well just because of being in this industry as long as I have in the same marketplace. Those kind of stories are actually quite common. Yeah. And they're they're cool. It, mm -hmm. it makes you understand that there is a family network, so to speak, among I, I think Arizona is, is a spoiled area. I don't care what what manufacturer you want to talk about. I think we got amazing vendor support here. Oh, and when we actually are meeting with those vendors on a somewhat regular basis, it just capitalizes on that. So Yeah, we are I think we are pretty spoiled out We there. are. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Who gets insured, you know, when you're when you are insured? Just the person or can you insure others parts of your company if you have employees? Can you can the they member get himself How? is who gets insured. Now along those lines, uh, Steve has chosen a different path with his employees, but if you have employees, they also offer employee insurance. And that employee insurance is basically the same thing you're getting. What you're not getting as an employee, for example, is you're getting less in life insurance. Uh, there's a couple other little there's things. There's not sick route for the employee. There's no sick route for the employee. Right. Uh, which is why Steve chose to have them have your employees be full members. Right. Uh, so that's the way to do that. But the, you're getting the employee members are getting the same quality, the same insurance that a member is going yeah. to get. So if you have employees, you can cover them through that insurance. Yes, right. Yeah, cool. So I kind of touched on the camaraderie already, but I want to really, you know, reiterate, you know, that it's not just for one polars. 
um, because I think that that's always been our, my my thought process, and I think there's definitely advantages, you know, if you run a company and have employees to be a part of it, and looking at it from that aspect because. You know, it's not just for that. Is it designed for that or was it originally? Yes. But, you know, there's a lot that can be gained by being a part of it if you run a company, right? If you have these people, just the camaraderie alone, have, like you said, having that index of people being able to call, like there's so much you can gain by being involved in it, you know, if you, even if you're not just a one polar. So, yeah, it's kind of funny on that note. Um, this is speaking completely different side of it, but we have our board meetings and every once in a while our board meeting might go a little long. We meet at a restaurant and I'll get home a little late. My wife will be like, what did you guys talk about? How does your meeting go for like three hours? And I'm like, well, I gotta be honest with you. It's not necessarily that the meeting went three hours. It's that there may be only four of us there, but we've gotten so involved with helping each other out in our own, in, in each other's businesses We've built the relationships because we're serving together as board members. We have gotten to know each other even better than just the members do. But we'll sit there and we'll talk about how can I do this? How can I do this? And we've even made comments to one another how we value that relationship that we have actually established with each other because we're helping each other grow their own business, their their profit line their knowledge, their wheelhouse of how do I fix something, but we'll also then take that back to membership also sometimes. It it bleeds into everybody. There's times where after a meeting, there's people that can't get out the door fast enough. (laughs) Then there's there's people that will hang out in the parking lot at at Pool Corp for an extra hour, myself included, more than more than once. Talking well, about I, I was there for an extra an hour and a half when right. I was there. And then so when I left, there was like nine people. people still there. So <laughs> And, yeah, and that's conversation so. about the industry. How do I do this? Hey, have you ever run into that? And it's we keep saying this camaraderie. It, it truly becomes relationships about the industry and reaching out and saying, how do I do this? And, and somebody's probably going to know. Like Mark said earlier, I may not have all the knowledge, Man, I got a lot of contacts and I'll find the person that knows how to do that. And that's just, there is not a number that you can put on that. When you can look at your homeowner, whether you got 40 pools or 400 pools, when you can look at your homeowner and say, I can take care of you. Super valuable. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. And that knows no age. I know sometimes that the criticism with any association, I would assume is, well, it's just for old guys. Yeah, just old gals and guys, and <laughs> and it's it's not. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really, these, but this, in everybody's defense, it looks like it's for something out of the '90s or something. Right, and I'm just being totally honest. Absolutely, and I think um, you guys are doing a great thing, and I'm so glad that you know Tyler got to go down there and. Um, experience that and having you guys on the show have a definite, uh, definitely have a different look on what IPSA is and all the different values that it provides. So, you know, it's definitely one of those things. Don't judge a book by its cover. Exactly. And, you know, just by maybe looking at the logo or, you know, going to the desert, uh, pool and spa show. Right. Um, but we know that you guys are putting a lot more into that as well. So just, really have a different, you know, outlook on this and anybody listening to this, this is, I don't know why you wouldn't look into something like this because this is really covering all the bases, especially in being a one polar. And we definitely understand that because when it was just tie out there doing pools and then I came into the mix, um, it was much more difficult. And when you build up a team of 10, 15, you know, it, it's a lot easier to get routes covered and different things like that. Sure. And you don't might not need some of that other support, but going down there and, uh, you know, just being a part of those meetings is more beneficial in so many, you know, different ways because you're staying in the know what's going on. And, right. you know, it's good to give back too. Right. That's a, that's Absolutely. a really good feeling. Um, and just talking to someone and be like, dude, what you got to do is da 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 da. You know what I mean? Here, go talk to my guy, whatever. Like, there's a man, that's one of the best feelings ever. And just like helping somebody out right. and especially watching them take the things that you've said and making them work. That's even, you know, that's even cooler. Yeah, agree. 
So can you talk to us more about the IPSA training manuals? Um, do you get those books when you join and do you think they've helped you guys over the years? So the IPSA training manuals, uh, the, the one of them is, like we said earlier, it is where we begin with our water chemistry certification uh, for IPSA. That is a book that uh, the basic training manual, uh, part one, and it actually says chemicals on it. When you go into part two, it talks more about equipment. Uh, there are several books uh, in the IPSA uh, manual library. Robert Lowry is our key influence on these books. Uh, anybody that knows that name knows that that is just a resource that you can just say the name and stop the conversation. He's just an authority in this industry on chemistry. Absolutely. Yeah, also goes by Bob Lowry yeah. sometimes. <laughs> what did I say? You said Robert, but <laughs> okay. yeah, either way, Bob you, Lowry, you are yeah. correct. <laughs> you got uh, his government name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're correct. But I think, you know, some of his classes say Bob Lowry. It is. Yes. He does yeah. go by Bob. Yeah. So, but amazing information in there. Uh, the book itself is one of those things that, like I said, it's needed for that online chemistry exam that required to become a member of IPSA. And we sell those books. Uh, they can be purchased online uh, or they can be, we, we try to have them at the chapter level available for would-be members or members alike. Um, we try to offer them at the Desert Pool and Spa Show. Uh, people can pick them up there. Even if you're not wanting to be a member, it's just, it's amazing resources for your company. Uh, again, the, the, the author of these books is such an asset to every single person in this industry to have that information. Yeah, the books are really good. Right. right? We wish we would have had those when we were in our <laughs> service sure. business because each one of our, that, no matter how much those books cost, like every technician would have had one, would have been doing training on it. But why, it doesn't have to stop there. You should have all the training manuals and different things that you possibly can. Absolutely. Um, take all the quizzes, make sure that, you know, go Download the Quizlet app on every phone that you have. There, It's free. You can make little flashcards out of it and train yourself, train your team, do whatever you want with it. Right. Um, there's so many different things that you can do. But, yeah, these books are, you know, extremely powerful. One of the uh, biggest purchasers of our training manuals uh, here in town in Arizona, and, and I know people other parts of the country would know him too, is Greg Garrett. And, uh, you know, he is so believes in these books. And, and he has them constantly. So uh, I would say if you're ever taking a class with Greg, whether it's Arizona, California, Texas, Florida, it doesn't matter where, uh, or even if he's going other th than that, go to his class. Greg teaches from these books. That's how much and everybody who knows him knows uh, he knows his stuff and he, he believes in these books 100%. Yeah. And, uh, he gives um, the I believe the basic training manual out at the startup class. It's part, right. of, part of the tuition for that. And if it's you're ever trying cool. to find something out of one of those books, he can recite just about every <laughs> topic by verse. the page, chapter, and verse. The man knows the book. Yep, they're really awesome, and we definitely. I don't know why we didn't know they exist. To be honest, so we're giving you guys gold here by telling you they exist because you picked that up. It goes through the entire thing, man. How to run. Your, there's so much stuff in there, how to run a business, on the, not even chemical-wise, just everything you want to know question-wise is in that book. It's pretty insane, and we wish we definitely knew they existed for sure. So is there any, you know, books or podcasts that, you know, really have helped you out, you know, maybe not so much uh, Ipsa pool book related? Well, uh, I will represent the older side of things. I I have just the last couple of years started discovering podcast and and the benefit that, that they have. Uh, and I'm ashamed of myself. I need to put a little more effort in, into doing those. But, you know, a typical old guy, yeah, I don't need that stuff. I can read it all in my magazines. <laughs> but, uh, but I absolutely have been listening lately. And uh, the it's just so much easier. Uh, Steve had talked earlier about uh, – Working and if he has a long run between places, and especially with cars and trucks the way they are nowadays, uh, you could put something on and listen while you're driving. And yeah, it's just there's so much more information that I know personally I need to take better advantage of. So I myself am not a big reader. Uh, I kind of mentioned that earlier. I 
I've always learned by doing stuff. I've always joked and said that if a heart surgeon would actually just show me how to do open heart surgery, I'll get the second one and I'll save the guy's life. But if you ask me how to read this stuff for 10 years in college, I'm not going to make it. And so I usually end up kind of defaulting to trade publication stuff. I've had the Pool and Spa News, the Aqua Magazine. Uh, One of the things that we do get in IPSA, we get the Ipsen. That's got some information in it that uh, will what? keep you up. The Ipsen, it's a it's a, a magazine put out by Ipsa. Oh, okay. Um, and you do get it as part of your membership. Yeah. And how often does that come out? Monthly. That's oh, a nice. monthly. It's Online and uh, in the mail and oh. hard copy. So. Yeah. Cool. And so that's stuff that I'm usually looking at newspapers, looking at uh, magazines, Um uh, I'll refer back to a, a manual once in a while to try to help figure something out. Um, one of the other benefits in our chapter level, and a lot of the chapters within IPSA also do the service industry news. We actually, on a chapter level, we automatically subscribe you. We pay for your subscription to service industry news newspaper. Uh, so a lot of it's just it's it's trade related information, and social media brought me as far as into the podcast world. It's funny. I, I call myself a tweener with technology. I still use notebooks. I, in fact, I use too many notebooks. I'm not sure which one has the right note sometimes. Um, I've got a tablet and I've got smartphones. I, I try to keep going with as much as I can with technology, but I struggle sometimes really digging deep. You, you mentioned an app here and there, and it's like, well, I got to check that out. I wonder if it could help me. I still don't um, think it matters, though. I still think that all of you still need to write things down. And I'm learning that we're all different, but there's, for me anyway, I have, there's so much I can do on a computer, but I have to like remove myself from it right. and I have to write it down. It's like, yeah, I could put it on a tablet or something else, but it's like, I got to get my eyes because it's like, this isn't the real world almost. Like I need to like tangibly write it. It's one that and pen it helps the paper. Remember. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I need to do something different. I don't. Um, it's something that I think will always be around. And if it's not, I think that'll be really weird. It's a level of commitment when you're writing something down. Yeah. And and I know somebody would say, well, certainly is tapping it in. No, there's a level of commitment to actually using your hand and writing something down. And I like, I really do like writing something down, like my list, my daily list. And I like highlighting it when I'm finished with it. Yeah. I there's can school people on apps and different things you can use, but there's nothing like writing it down, like, I got to get that done, and then getting it done and being like, skirt, yep. highlighting it off. You just can't. <laughs> Is that a highlighter sound? Yeah. You'll, <laughs> never, you'll never have that satisfaction with an app of taking that piece of paper and crumpling that thing yeah. up and throwing it in the garbage can. There's something. <laughs> no, I just let the pages stack up. Me too. <laughs> put put, put yeah. them over. <laughs> but as far as you know, the podcast world, I gotta I gotta put a shout out to you guys. I hadn't really dug into podcasts, and on social media, I, I see one time pop up on a page this pool chasers thing, and I'm like, ah, cool, I'll follow that. And at that time, it wasn't le- letting wasn't leading into the podcast scene yet. And at least not for me, I hadn't found it. And then all of a sudden I see this pool chasers podcast. I'm like, Oh, cool. Well, I got to check that out. That's that's pool stuff. I like the pool magazines. I like the pool newspapers. I like the pool books. Well, let's see what this podcast thing is. And so I got to, you know, hand it to you guys for bringing some content to us guys that I can throw, like I said earlier, I'll cue it up in the truck for a drive and I'll listen to it or put a, a pod in my ear and, and listen to it while I'm working. And the content is valuable. And so it's been a podcast that I've been listening to. And one of the other ones, Born to Impact, is one that actually one of the other pool guys kind of said, hey, you know, check out these things. And that's Joel Marion, that a uh, little bit of like more business help type stuff. And so it's it's trying to push myself into the future content of getting more podcast into my world because it's it's valuable information and it's so easy to just drive down the road and listen to music. Sometimes that'll set you free and it's great. But sometimes taking that time to listen to some content that will help you better yourself it's just a valuable asset, and I appreciate what you guys are bringing to everybody. You're welcome. Thank, yeah, thank you for you. saying all that. And it's like there, 
there isn't any more excuses. There's a bunch of really good videos out there. There's, you know, a few podcasts. Obviously, we have ours. There's a ton of really good magazines, books. There's everything. So it's we're trying to make it harder for people to say, oh, well, I couldn't find it. It's like, dude, stop playing. There's podcasts Look where you can it. listen. There's magazines. There's books. Yeah. There's videos on YouTube. And now that we're on each one of these platforms, like everybody that's, you know, providing this information, we just need to progress. Right. We'll make it look better. We're going to update the information. We're going to do all these different things. So you should, there's really no excuse. Like th things have changed so much from even when Ty started Brothers five, six years ago. There's been so many, you know, changes and it's cool that, you know, so many people are on board to make things better. So right. yeah, really excited for the way things are going. I think you touched base on it earlier, but can you tell the listeners where they can go to find out more information if they're interested in joining? Yeah, absolutely. Best place to go would be ipsa.com, I-P-S-S-A.com. And uh, you can you could work through it. You can find different areas. Uh, it, it'll walk you through the different parts of the country that you're at. Uh, all the information that you could possibly need to know about uh, our association, how to join, just how to learn about us will be on that. Uh, there'll be numbers for uh, a chapter in your area with the uh, emails and or phone numbers so you can contact the people that are running that particular chapter if you're, you're interested in going. Uh, I definitely would direct you to ipsa.com. Right. Cool. Well, thank you guys, and thanks for being on the show with us again. I think it really helped clarify quite a bit of things, so I hope the, I think the listeners will definitely benefit from it. So thank you. Okay. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. Thanks for checking out this episode. If you want to find out more about our guests or the sponsors of the show, you can check them out on the links we have provided in the write-up below. We have also provided links to our social media platforms, so please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Our tag is Pool Chasers. If the podcast has brought you any value, please do what you can to support us through our Patreon page by going to patreon.com forward slash pool chasers. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast to be updated each time a new episode is released. One last thing. If you're not yet in our Facebook group, join it today to be surrounded by like-minded individuals who are all trying to better the industry. Thank you all for the support. We appreciate your time and your ear. See you out there, pool chasers.